Now today we are talking about these little things here. And I thought that they deserve, you know, their own video. You know, back then I was younger and I did not have any appreciation for cassettes because, you know, I use them. It's something that you have every day. And uh, the moment I saw these things in the adverts and the magazines and stuff, I was just like, wow, I want this. Something with CD quality that I can treat like a cassette. And that's exactly what it was. And my excitement for these you know, went on for, it must be like a decade or something like this. Well, it was the late 90s and, you know, I ended up working really hard to get my first mini disc recorder, which was this thing here. But very soon, I gave this back for a refund because I decided to get this one instead. I mean, this one claimed to be the world's smallest and lightest mini disc recorder with you know the best battery life so I decided to go for it I mean uh, it's the SJMR 200 and to be honest with you if you hold you know a mini disc in front of it and obviously face it directly to you it almost hides it <laughs> so I mean if you think about it I don't think anyone can actually get you know it's millimeters bigger than a mini disc I don't think you can get any smaller than this I mean if you want to look at how thin it is I mean, how much thinner are you gonna want that? You yeah, know, it's... I think this is enough. <laughs> Later on, when you got MDLPs out and, you know, things like this, uh, they started... these standard ones started dropping in price. For some reason, the first one left an impression on me, so I ended up getting it again <laughs> when the price went down. There's a Panasonic and there's a Sony. I mean, they both have their advantages, disadvantages. It's kind of a different feel. It's a different way of, you know, working. This one, despite this one being more, you know, advanced and more, a little bit more clever, this one uh, touched my heart because, you know, maybe technically it was my first ever one. Uh, but yeah, this one is the one which I used. I mean, this one, unfortunately, now it's completely gone. Um, it it was blown up in an experiment. <laughs> well, I wasn't experimenting on this. I was um, making my visualization project, which. I made a reference to it, so I will link it in the description below. Basically, I was making a boost converter, and um, this was connected, you know, to the to the line in. So unfortunately, this one has had 300 volts DC jolted up its headphone jack. <laughs> so uh, this one is gone. You know, I cannot even switch it on. Now let's kind of put this aside for a moment, and let's start talking about the mini discs themselves. I've always been someone who wants to know how the stuff she uses works. It's just a curiosity I've always had about the things around me. I always knew that optical meant laser technology from finding out how about CDs and how they worked. And I know audio cassettes, floppy disks, VHS, open reels and so forth are magnetic technology. But what always puzzled me was when I finally got my mini discs, I read that they are magneto optical. What the freak is magneto optical? Both magnetic and optical? I wondered if it was some sort of strange crossbreed between the two. Well, sort of. Explained in a nutshell, there's a laser on the underside of the mini disc, which, when in recording mode, the laser heats the disc up to the point where it can be magnetically altered. There's a magnetic head on the upper side of the disc, which changes the polarity of the part that has been heated by the laser underneath, resulting in you know, ones and zeros depending on polarity. So it's recording digital in this way. As far as I know, this, is, this way is called the Faraday effect, which I will not go into because when researching it, it seemed to get pretty complicated. <laughs> So on playback, the laser detects the polarity change of, on the reflected light, which is the digital information that is read off the disc. Well, it's pretty clever if you think about it. A CD stores 650 megabytes of data for 74 minutes of music, and 700 megabytes of data for 80 minutes of music. I remember later in its life there was there were 90 minute discs around but I never got a chance to you know use them. 
A standard mini disc stores 74 minutes or 80 minutes, just the same, but can ho hold only around 140 megabytes of data. It, it does this by using 8-track compression, which has its variants ranging from 8-track to 8-track 3 plus. As far as I know, it compresses by omitting the frequencies which aren't audible by the human ear. There's a lot of debate I've come across about whether 8-track is good or not, but personally, from my own experience, I find it very close to CD quality. I still to this day enjoy using mini discs as well as many other formats, even though I would of course still use uncompressed WAV files for master recordings of my music, which kind of is a no-brainer really. I wouldn't even use FLAC files for, you know, master recordings. More often than not, these did not mess up and they, unless they were, you know, really dropped or something like this because, you know, these were, uh, you know, these are obviously encased in some sort of cartridge, you know, uh, the disc is inside it. I mean, here you get these uh, TDK ones, these were not so bad, you know, even though this one itself is messed up somehow, I must have really dropped it. As you can see, this one here, it's got a crack and uh, it doesn't, you know, it, it doesn't play, it, it comes up with a TOC error and I will explain in a moment what TOC is. I mean, automatically it did not like high space. You can hear that, right? Very flimsy, you just drop these slightly, they will, you know, they can get damaged inside their case. <laughs> now remember these premium ones, these Sony ones, these were beautiful discs. You know, these are just quality. And you can see here that it says shock absorbing. Now since this poor little one has seen its, you know, its end days many years ago, I am going to just uh, open this up. You guessed it. <laughs> now what I like about these is just like floppy disks, these have a notch here which write enable and write protect. You know, it protects whatever you've written, it does not allow you to record on it if you do that. And of course, just to record it again, you just write and enable it, just like a tab on a cassette or a floppy disk. Unlike floppy disks, you cannot, you know, pull the shutter out or at all, it's locked, you know, to protect the disk. When this goes inside the machine, there's a mechanism which goes inside here, and that's only then can it be released. Like this. But, since we are kind of, you know, completely taking this apart, it's kind of... Oops! Oh, that took a nice journey somewhere, didn't it? Okay, that took a journey also. <laughs> this is basically the disc inside. It's like, it's like a diddly CD. I find it so cute. Now, if you notice, the disc has two sides. Like, one is... You know, of course it's got two sides. <laughs> what I mean is... What I mean is... One is... <laughs> Um, lighter, you know, there's darker, and they both, you know, it uses both sides even though it's not double-sided, you know, it's like, as I explained earlier on, the laser is at the bottom side, and that heats the disc while the magnetic, you know, head at the top, you know, at the same, at the same point as the laser, goes with the laser and writes on the disc. So if you notice, the bottom side is darker, and I have a feeling I'm not sure, but I have a feeling that the dark, you know, absorbs the heat from the laser. And the magnetic head is at the top, changing the magnetic polarity. Now, as far as I know, the TOC, no, TOC uh, stands for Table of Contents. I believe the white ring here, correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone knows about mini discs, that is where the, the TOC, the Table of Contents, is written. Now, this is a reference system which um, the mini disc player reads and uh, it tells it where the tracks are, you know, because um, the tracks can be, you know, moved, they can be erased, they can be replaced. Like, for example, you have track 2, and you don't want it to be track 2, you want it to be track 6. And, you know, of course, you can swap track 2 and track 6 and move their positions. So, 
you know, it's like a reference system. That's that all that's doing is changing the table of contents, the TOC. And it's something that's completely impossible on CDs. So I find that, you know, quite fascinating in itself. Now let's go into the testing, shall we? Now I have my mini disc recorder player here. Unfortunately, I do not have my uh, the chewing gum battery, which is what you know they used to be called because they have, are chewing gum shaped, and I no longer have the mains adapter. You know, I lost both of them things. So the only thing I have left, I just have this external battery pack now, which just takes you know the the usual AA batteries. Here I have the mini discs from my past, which of course, you know, I compose the music uh, myself on the Amiga, and these are recorded directly from the Amiga. As you can see, even here, I stated the year, it was back in 1998. What I'm going to do is connect this to the line out rather than the headphone out, because, you know, that's what it's there for. And this is the original Amiga version of my music, Utopia. I bought later on was for my hi-fi separates back then, but used by myself for recording and home listening, sometimes taken to my brother's place for recording his DJ mixes. It is a Technics SJMD100. We have had it since around 2001 and it's still going strong, well except for the dog, the jog dial <laughs> being quite jumpy and oversensitive. <laughs> my guess is that the contacts need spraying. <laughs> Unlike the portables, this deck has twenty four Unlike the portables, this deck has twenty four bit DSP which stands for digital signal processing. This is basically a dedicated microprocessor which measures, compresses and filters the analog signals in real time or on the fly. The beauty of the mini disc is that it behaves exactly like a CD, except it's much smaller and it can be recorded on in the same manner as one would record an audio cassette. In fact, one could say much more conveniently. You can name the disc, name the track, erase tracks, move tracks, divide or combine, which allows for crude editing. Sony started selling his, its mini disc back in 1992. And in my humble opinion, I find this the most ideal digital music format, and I feel it's a shame that it didn't take off too well, and was outshined by MP3. To my surprise, I discovered that it actually lasted all the way up to March 2013, when Sony fully stopped selling. Submitting to the MP3 age myself, my mini discs were sadly all in the attic from 2004 onwards. When recently discovering that, the so that Sony discontinued more recently than I expected, I decided to look into it and discovered that the last of the mini discs was the High MD, which seems to be a high density disc capable of storing 1 gigabyte. It allowed a choice between 1 hour 34 minutes of PCM uncompressed audio or the new ATRAC 3 Plus compression, which in SP mode gave you 7 hours and 55 minutes and in LP mod gave you 34 hours. Not to mention ability to save data files such as documents, images, videos and so forth. It seems interesting and quite appealing actually. Yeah, if only they had this back, th back in the day, for sure things would have been very different. Shame it was discontinued in 2011 and I never knew of its existence. 